How's it going, folks? You know how we're going to do it, okay? Not a major week for us in terms of earnings, but I want to talk about earnings coming up. So we're going to also include a weekly recap of the portfolios, show you what happened the last week uh, as far as news. We're going to throw it all together. This is going to be a mega, just fun video for you. So we'll start off with the earnings portion of it, what to look forward for next week. Then we'll recap last week, Robinhood portfolio, M1 Finance portfolio. Uh, show you how we did in comparison to the general market, and then just a couple news points. So, um, again, nothing crazy. A couple stand out to me this week for October. Uh, after close, you have Duck Horn and Comtech. Nothing too crazy for me there. Tuesday before open, I'd like to mention PepsiCo. Obviously, um, great, fantastic company. Uh, undoubtedly, it's a company that's expected to put up an EPS line of $1.73 compared to $1.66 of a year prior. Not too bad. And an overall $19.3 billion number uh, compared to $18 billion, a 7% growth year over year. like to see if they're able to accomplish that. Obviously, it's pretty um, helpful for their comp sales due to the fact that last year we saw a big decline, obviously, uh, in restaurant business for them that they're able to really recover this year. So really good for them in that aspect. So uh, definitely an earnings I'd like to look at. The stock typically doesn't react too heavily. Um, as a result, but it's worth looking at the earnings, see how the company is doing as a whole. Uh, Saratoga, before open on Wednesday, we've got Constellation Brands, uh, obviously known for alcoholic beverages, uh, RPM, and Occulty, Acuity Brands, I should say. After closed, Levi's is definitely one to look at as well because of the fact that the entire really clothing retail sector has been mashed over the last month. We're talking most of these stocks down 5 plus percent in the span of a month. So can they recover? Could Levi start the trend of, of positivity? Don't know. Uh, don't know what to look at there. RGP. Uh, before open Thursday we've got Tilray. I know some of you will still follow the stock. Now on I follow personally um, because it is uh, somewhat of a, you know, it was a joke stock for sure. Um, the shot to the moon simply because they sell a little bit of the hashish, um, if you know what I'm saying. We're not talking about hash browns, okay? That's all I'm telling you. Um, not a company I really like the financials on, though. I really don't. Uh, I think there's too much competition in the industry. It's hard to necessarily pinpoint one particular stock that's going to do well, uh, or company, I should say. Uh, Lamb Weston, weird stuff there. Conagra. Um, that's right. We love we love it. Uh, Helen of Troy, and after close, Accolade, and then Friday with Berna. Um, again, nothing crazy this week uh, as far as that's concerned. So uh, let's get into the recap here. What did the week uh, prior look like for us? Well, from a Robinhood standpoint, we are um, down 1.5 percent uh, on the week. Not beautiful, I will say that. Um, we can't lie to you there. Uh, if you look at uh, what we what we did this week, um, let's just look at uh, some of the moves we made last week. Nothing crazy. We put more money in than typically uh, we would. Um, for sure, we're just going to look at orders here to show you what in the world we bought. Obviously, dividend reinvestments are included in here, but as far as just overall market buys, um, QILD, I purchased $100 worth on the 30th, um, and I bought $50 worth the day prior, or two days prior on the 28th. Um, so keep that in mind. And then also $27 on each KBWI, KBWD, and another 100 on QILD, developing that position, starting it off. So that's really what this week was about: is developing some more income strategies. Uh, not necessarily that I need the income right now, but just due to the uncertainty of the market right now, personally I'm investing in a couple of different just equity strategies for me to get equity in the meantime and really build up these positions via dividend reinvestment um, while we kind of wait out a, what I believe is going to be a strange period over the next year even. Um, where we don't know what's going on. We've got bad news about economic data really still. There's there's a lot going on. So let's look at the M1 Finance portfolio in which um, we were down 1.78%. Not a crazy, fantastic week for us here, obviously. 
as you can tell. Some of the activity that happened this week, um, really just the, uh, I put in a second deposit of $100 because I see a dip in the market and I, I have a lot of capital waiting on the sideline, so I, I put some of it in. We had a decent purchase of, of realty income here, SPY, OHI, $26. Gladstone Capital six dollars, Qualcomm five, uh, Prospect Capital eleven, uh, Orchid Island Capital. Uh, love that dividend payment there. Twenty two fifty six pays a nice one, and AT and T even five dollars twelve cents, and Kimco at twenty one dollars fifty three cents. The purchase earlier in the week, um, the initial Monday deposit went into nine dollars of Orchid, ten dollars of PepsiCo. As we talked about prior, six dollars of Gladstone, three dollars of Spy again. Uh, AT and T ten dollars, Qualcomm six, uh, Realty Income twenty seven again. Uh, OHI thirty two dollars, Disney thirty four dollars, and SPHD eight dollars seventeen cents. So again, just I, I kind of stick to the automated process here of sticking towards the targets. Um, nothing crazy as far as additions to the M one Finance portfolio, considering. Adding CarMax into the play, but we'll see what that looks like. If we compare that to overall the market's performance, the Dow Jones was down one. Beat the Dow Jones uh, as far as the week's performance was concerned on either portfolio. But we did outperform the S&P 500 down 2.21%. Not too bad to see there. And the NASDAQ having another rough week down 3.2. A little bit of recovery Friday. Um, but still a terrible week for it, and we outperformed there as well. I'd like to see it. A couple news points reported a pretty good earnings. The stock still fell quite a bit, um, mostly due to a uh, guidance perspective. Again, the concern is going to be on consistency of uh, stock. The, really, that's, that's what the main concern is. We had a pretty bad um, jobless claim, um, pretty bad. Uh, unemployment claims here, initial jobless claims up uh, to 362,000 compared to a 335,000 consensus. It actually rose month over month, not not good. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's not good. We don't like to see that. Again, I still think there's a lot of concerns and we're really allowing a lot of people to just not work and still having the government pay them. We're still having programs out there that are allowing this to happen consistently when we need to start weaning people off of this and get them back to work. But maybe that's just me. And finally, we have Rivian. If that excites you, EV maker Rivian is filing for IPO. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, we'll see what that looks like. But uh, that's what I got for you this week as far as news. Next week, we'll have a full in-depth um, earnings report video, most likely because we have a lot more companies reporting. So that's what I got for you, and I hope you have a great day.